Oh, honey, look at the detail on this. That is really lifelike. Well, thank you. That's oh, very kind God. of you to say. Crystal Bridges may sound like the name of a 70s rock album, but I tell you, it's a lot cooler than that. Nestled in the heart of Northwest Arkansas, Crystal Bridges is a monument to American art. Aside from the museum, which permanently houses a collection spanning five centuries, there's also a library, art studio, gathering hall, restaurant, and three and a half miles of trails that wind the grounds, giving access to the beautiful Ozark landscape. I have to tell you, one of the most extraordinary aspects of the Crystal Bridges Museum experience is the architecture. Well, the beauty of the place is that we're on 120 acres of land, and so it's surrounded by forests, and it's surrounded by architecture. So when we started, opened the museum in 2011, architecture was an important piece, but when you're in the building, you actually see natural light uh, interacting with the art. So it is paintings and sculpture and the traditional thought about what it is, but it's also sense of place. And when you venture into nature, it's the world of nature comes alive. Designed by internationally renowned architect Moshe Softy, the museum sits in a natural ravine integrating two spring-fed ponds that are spanned by two signature bridge-like structures, hence the name Crystal Bridges. As you move through the complex, you'll find that it flows from inwardly focused spaces, serving as galleries and classrooms, to other areas where there are dramatic openings and views to the surrounding landscape. No detail was spared in construction, all the way down to the curvatures of the roof lines of the buildings, which emulate the surrounding hillsides. When you're here in this space, it's clear that from the outset, Crystal Bridges aim to design a space in which art and nature are experienced simultaneously and harmoniously. And that vision continues into future projects. But I think when you think about our grounds and our spaces, we'll continue to evolve them by installing things like new sculpture and new experiences on a temporary basis. Um, as well as thinking about how do we expand uh, the view of contemporary art. So we'll be thinking about how do we uh, address contemporary art in new and innovative ways, things that people may have not seen or experienced before. So look forward to that. Here in the museum is Crystal Bridges' latest architectural acquisition. After all, architecture is art. You see, this is the model of Frank Lloyd Wright's Bachman Wilson House. Look a little closer and you can see the fantastic detail. Fitting because Faye Jones, the school's first dean, was an apprentice of Wright and was enormously influenced by his design. And although Frank Lloyd Wright never designed a building in the natural state, Wright's architecture and its tie to nature left a deep imprint on Jones's work, which has visibly impacted Northwest Arkansas's architectural landscape. As a joint project with the University of Arkansas Library Special Collection, moving the Bachman Wilson House from New Jersey to Arkansas presented quite the challenge in which Crystal Bridge is welcomed with open arms. The Frank Lloyd Wright House was a bit of a surprise. It was not planned when we originally envisioned the museum, so it was really exciting to have an opportunity to do something so unique, to be able to move a Frank Lloyd Wright House to this space. Uh, not also exciting, but challenging. So the thrilling piece about it is to actually create that, that triumvirate of art, nature, and architecture. And how do we think about architecture in this museum space, but also how do we continue that American experience through the eyes of an architect? So uh, Frank Lloyd Wright was the best at connecting architecture and nature, and that fits perfectly with our goal at the museum. Frank Lloyd Wright once said, the physician can bury his mistakes, but the architect can only advise his clients to plant vines. In the case of the Bachman Wilson House, 
There was certainly no reason to plant vines on this beautiful structure, but drastic measures had to be taken to preserve it from repeated flooding and imminent destruction. Originally built in 1954 along the banks of the Millstone River in New Jersey, the Bachman Wilson Home is a work of art in simplicity and form. It's a classic example of what Frank Lloyd Wright called a Usonian home, a distinctly American style, low cost home that would be within the reach of the average middle class family. The modest three bedroom, 2000 square foot home is built with natural materials on a concrete slab. The kitchen is small and opens into a large living area with glass curtain walls that provide expansive views of the outdoors. In 1988, the property was purchased by Lawrence and Sharon Tarantino, an architect designer team who painstakingly restored the house using the original construction documents. Despite their award-winning efforts, the Tarantinos were unable to hold back the periodic floodwaters from the river and put the house on the market in 2012. The sale of the house was based on the condition that it would be moved to a site of suitable natural beauty. That's where Crystal Bridges stepped in. But the question was, how does one go about relocating an entire house from New Jersey to Arkansas? They've got copies of the reconstruction I drawn. I think Ms. Barnes, these plants can be put in the builder's hand. When I first went up there and Bill and I went to the house originally, visited the architects that owned the house and looking at the plans, we made a comment. We could build this easier from scratch just the plans than pulling a piece of the park, which is true, but not what Crystal Bridges wanted. They wanted the original building as much as possible. So obviously we could have built it from those drawings, built it faster, probably built it cheaper, and maybe even improvised and corrected some of the problems, but that's not what we wanted. That's what I was going to say to me, just extending this line at some point there. The structure is actually going to happen probably before April. And where there is some structure, or like a bridge or something like that. But that's a railroad pad. Moving this was, you know, this is the way, best way I could describe this as a big jigsaw puzzle. And, you know, that's the challenge of it is you have everything labeled and coordinated and all that stuff, but there are certain pieces that you can't cut. I mean, they have to be put back exactly the way they were. And so by doing that, we've learned a lot of how they built it. And you see a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright's influence. Tarantino's deconstructed it and then they labeled it and then they sent it all to us and they sent us a catalog with everything and basically it was broken down room by room and then where every board went from top to bottom and in the sequence that it went. And of course, you know, very, very careful deconstruction. There were some pieces that had some rot and some damage that we had to repair and some different things like that. Uh, but it also revealed to me, I went back and took my framer with me and we went back and looked after the deconstruction was underway and all of the inside skin was off because I needed to see how they'd run their wiring and their plumbing and see what opportunities I had, whether I was gonna do it the same way or if I had other options available for me. I think originally they wanted to come here and reconstruct the project. And so to do it local was gonna be a whole lot easier. The challenge taking an existing building is, let's be honest, it's not perfect. There are, there are nuances about it that created problems. In fact, early in the game, contractor found out that the existing building, existing building was two inches out of square. Well, the first question she asked me is, do we want to build it back two inches out of square? I said, no, no, it's easier to build it back square than trying to copy all the imperfections. The whole point is, it's his work of art. Art is more than just paintings or sculptures. A lot of things in nature can be art. And this building is as much a part of American art in its shape as anything else that they've got at Crystal Bridge. It would be the sculptures that are on the grounds or the paintings that are in the museum. Relocating a house is no easy task, particularly when you're disassembling it, transporting it, and reassembling it in a painstaking way. But, you know, there's a lot of pride in taking on a project like this. So by far the most difficult uh, challenge that we had here was where do you 
take a Frank Lloyd Wright house and put it on our site. Where it's located today, I, I could not imagine it anywhere else. It's in a setting that feels like you're back in 1956, that it's miles away from uh, Moshe Softy's work, yet you're, you're 150 feet away. The builder went up to New Jersey while the house was being deconstructed, took a lot of pictures as things were exposed, gave him a better picture of what it was going to take to put it back together. And because let's be honest, when they built it in 54, there were certain things about it that we just couldn't do that way because the integrity of some of the walls, we felt like we were compromised. It makes you nervous. <laughs> you don't want to miscut anything. And you know, it's a matter of keeping the integrity of it. Because you know you want to be able to bring people in and say, these are the original doors, this is the original glass. One of the things that we had to do is we had to change the glass. Because the glass you know, that goes down to the floor and the windows and stuff like that, it wasn't tempered glass. We have one of the, one of the fins, it's a structural fin, was twisted two inches once they took it down. And so we actually manhandled and twisted that two inches back out of it, locked it into the roof and everything else because we really wanted everything to be original from the Frank Lloyd Wright's design and from the construction that was done in 1954. The challenges that arise is, is how do I hide those oddities about the original building, but still keep it as original to the intent of the architect as possible when it was built in 1954. That's understanding that building techniques in 54 are very different than they are in 2015. Uh, the wood, we've added a little threshold piece at the bottom of the wood, because the wood initially sat right on the concrete which caused the wood to deteriorate over a period of time. Well, we had a little small piece of, of metal that makes the wood a little last longer. And you can tell from the original pieces how the wood can deteriorate on the edges. And we found lots of places in the original wood where it deteriorated so bad on the ends, had to saw it off and re recontool it. That's why we had to bring some new wood in. But a lot of this is, a lot of this is still the original wood in the house. Some of it was neat to see how they put some stuff together. Some of the stuff that we would not do today they toenailed a lot of stuff that we would, you know, come up with a different way of attachment. Still yet, the integrity, it is still, you know, the same doors that were there, the same piano hinges, the same hardware. I mean, to me, it's a, it's a weird kind of deja vu to see this house in New Jersey and then see it here now. And what I want people to see is the same thing that I saw in New Jersey. I mean, we've got the same furniture, we've got everything. And so it's really unique for me to walk in here and say, I looked at this before. And so, you know, we've got, of course, a ton of pictures and everything like that, and we're looking at this, but that's, you know, that's what I want to see is the original, as much, as much as we can make it look like the original house to every little detail that we can do. And for them to be able to see it the way that it was done in 54. Scott, it's wonderful to be back here at Crystal Bridges. I cannot believe how the landscape is maturing over just four years. The philosophy here is really to embrace um, really American natives. It is. I, I think that something that we really promote is American art, American architecture, sure. and then the American garden. What I love about Crystal Bridges is that you all are not only changing out exhibitions and you have all these different programs going on, you're bringing new things into the landscape, like this latest colossal project by literally lifting up and bringing a Frank Lloyd Wright house onto the property. It's an exciting time here at Crystal Bridges. We think of the outside as the missing gallery. We talk about architecture, and we talk about Moshe Softy's work and, and Faye Jones. How about if you go to the start of the book and you talk about Frank Lloyd Wright? The first word I think about is stewardship. Um, how can we uh, save a house? that um, had been flooded and um, you know this, what? this particular Frank Lloyd Wright house the, the, this this particular Usonian uh, house in Millstone New Jersey the easy thing would have been to let the house go and a lot of them have and um, we felt like the story was unfinished and Crystal Bridges was the um, to be the place to tell that story you use the word Usonian is that is that does that refer to the single use of the home of a single family well, Usonian, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright was quite a character. He, uh, he felt like uh, American architects needed to label their type of architecture. Uh -huh. So Usonian, he coined as United States of North America. He celebrated the craftsmanship 
you know, there is no sheetrock, there is, there's right. not any paint. Yeah. It's pure. That home is just pure, it's native. It doesn't hide anything. So in that respect, it really does fit into this landscape. It honors the, the natural beauty. It does, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright talks a lot about where does architecture end and, and nature begin. The thing that is always challenging is how do you have a world-class landscape and a world-class architect and how do they work together? So we went back to the framework of a painting. When you come and you enter the site, the framework is the native plants. And then the green lawn is the canvas that works you to the painting, which is the house. And so we picked a place that was close, accessible, but it felt like it was intimate. And the house um, was part of the painting. It, it felt like it, it, it fit in there. Um, and it was always meant to go there. It does feel natural, it does feel seamless. I think you'd be very pleased to see where it is. I was today. just gonna ask, if Mr. Wright were to walk up, how do you think he'd feel? He appreciated nature, and nature appreciated his homes. And I think that he would be very pleased with this location. All the while the landscape crew is working on getting the exterior finished, carpenters on the inside are putting the final touches on the house itself. The engagement team is preparing for guests. Chief Engagement Officer Nikki Stewart explains how Crystal Bridges is connecting people with this most impressive piece of art. It really is about that intersection of art and nature and what happens when both are together. Separately, they're amazing things, but the intersection of art and nature is, in fact, this place, this architecture, and very much the Frank Lloyd Wright House. Historic homes are a little different than galleries simply because it's a different experience. The, the museum and the galleries were made to handle hundreds of people. A historic home, especially a Usonian home like this one, is not that big and it wasn't ever designed to be viewed the way galleries are. So there's a little difference but at the heart of both of them it remains the same. When you walk into the room there's all those formal things you think you're supposed to know. When you walk out of the room whatever you felt is what you remember. So we can give you information, we can tell you about the artwork or the time period, but it's on the way out the door that you feel connected to a story or a moment or a person that's what you really remember. I think approaching the Bachman Wilson house, it is a Frank Lloyd Wright piece of architecture, glorious, amazing architecture. People lived there. The story of all the people who built it, thought about it, lived there, visited, those stories will be part of your experience. And as you leave, it might be more of a home than a house. That's the connection we want to make. The first thing you'll walk through is an open air pavilion that was designed by the students at the University of Arkansas School of Architecture. That's part of the Frank Lloyd Wright tradition of Taliesin, where he had apprentices that studied with him and lived there with him for years. So we wanted to begin with that idea in mind of how his work is still being done today, or his style is still being embraced by architecture schools. So the students have created a pavilion where we can put some information in there for you so that no matter where you begin, you can get what you need in order to have an amazing experience in the house. So you'll be able to walk through the house a few different ways. We'll give you a self-guided tour brochure that you can take yourself through the house. You could go in with a guide who's gonna give a full tour. And the inside of the house isn't the only part of the experience. Walking around outside, there's just as many beautiful things to see outside as there are inside. And the physical space where it is is also important. The proximity to water, it echoes the proximity to water the house had in its original location. We're designing an experience where you can create your day at the house. And then as you come out, you walk through that same pavilion again and maybe you catch something new, some new information. Maybe you feel different now that you've seen it. There's always gonna be more to know about the house. There's always gonna be new stories to tell. So we're just at the beginning of what will be a many year process.
Rod, every time I come to Crystal Bridges, I'm amazed by the new displays and, well, interesting things to see. Oh, there's always something new at Crystal Bridges. So we've got new sculpture inside and out, we've got new exhibitions, and we've got new exciting things on the uh, grounds. So with this house, what is it you hope that visitors will take away from the experience? Well, I think many people have seen Frank Lloyd Wright's work from afar, and this will give you a completely, literally immersive experience within the house. Sure. So you'll see that quintessential American architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright. It's a house that's very, it's designed very specifically to interact with nature and light, which perfectly connects with the museum's mission. When I visit Crystal Bridges, I'm always amazed at the, the wide range of people that come here. I mean, from little kids to seniors to folks all over the country and even abroad. Well, one of the exciting things is it's, it's not a static experience. I mean, you can, you can make it that way if you like, if you just want to walk through the galleries and enjoy it. That's certainly pleasurable. Right. We've but got, there are a lot of things you can do. It's so true. We have a traditional gallery experience, yeah. but we've got programming that ranges from um, three years old to 103 years old. So we have salsa dancing and art making <laughs> and we have a great culinary program where we do uh, connect art and your stomach. So there's all sorts of activities. Everybody loves that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>about the museum as a community space. We do uh, a range of lectures in the gallery in our spaces that are informal um, and they, they cover the gamut, so from architecture to art to dance, theater, film. And this spills out into the garden, so for folks who are interested in learning about landscape design or native plants or... For the animal uh, premiere, yeah. Yeah, wildlife. So recently we did a raptor experience where you learned about owls, really? and eagles, the things that are around this community. Yeah. Sure. Isn't it interesting how museums have changed just over the past 20 years? It's an incredible transformation. <laughs> so we think of ourselves more than just art-centric. We, we stretch that to culture. Yeah, yeah. As you said earlier, a community uh, space, a community mm -hmm. place. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. spending the day seeing everything that Crystal Bridges has to offer, you work up an appetite. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about this new addition to the Crystal Bridges Museum of Art. It's a spectacular display. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. Rod, what a project. Good grief. This house, it's, it's, it's really extraordinary. We hope to open the house up to continuous experience. Sure, so. just like the museum. Yes, yeah, so yeah. We, will, we will focus on having the most accessible Frank Lloyd Wright house in the country. Oh, that's fantastic. Even though it's small. I totally see what you mean. It's, it frames this gorgeous view of the forest. This is the kitchen. <laughs> Perfect timing.